Hello and welcome back to the Villa View 4 preview ahead of Aston Villa's game tomorrow afternoon against Norwich City at Villa Park. This game was one that could have been billed as a promotion decider a few months ago. But no, really, Dan, there's not much in it, is there? Well, I think you're being generous by saying promotion decider a few months ago. But at the start of the season, you would have said for 100% that these two would have been up there competing to be in the top six. In fairness, I think Norwich are capable of getting the, getting the top six. It's not it's not that out of range for them, the, the top six, which makes it even more surprising that they've they got rid of their manager because it's still doable. And the fact that they haven't had anyone lined up to replace him is is quite bizarre. For us, there's still an outside chance, but it is an absolute massive outside chance. We'd have to have a hell of a lot of luck to reach the top the top six now. But I think it'll be a good game. I'm excited because I think it'll be a good game at Villa Park tomorrow. What do you expect in terms of what Norwich can offer us, really? Well, I was pleased to see that uh, Wes Houlihan is ruled out of the game because he's a player I've always liked and a player I would have quite liked Villa to sign a few times, obviously. He nearly did sign for us when Paul Lambert was in charge, or he, or he wanted to sign for us when Paul Lambert was in charge. I think Norwich is, one of Norwich's main issues is the fact that if your main striker pretty much is Cameron Jerome, then you're gonna, it's going to be hard work to, to have a good season. I know I'm probably asking for him to score a hat-trick now, I've said this, but if they'd have had a, if they'd have had a decent striker... They've got a good team, other than other than him, I think. So they'd, they'd have gone places with a, with a genuine goal scorer, in my opinion. Yeah, I think for me, the one that stands out now without um, having Wes Hulan in that side is Johnny House in the midfield. Really good player that I rate very highly as well. He's got a motor on him and he's the sort of player that box the box midfielder that you'd sort of look at and go, yeah, he's the man you have to target. And if you stop him, then it stops Norwich from sort of playing, especially when Wes Hulan's not playing. I think that's an important link for them in that particular area. Um, obviously, I spoke to Jack Reeve on Tottenham Norwich City. There's an opposition preview, which you can go and check out. Um, I talked about the threats I th- thought they could pose, and I put, picked out uh, Wes Houlihan. Obviously, without him, he did say that that's a mainstream for them gone that's so important. He said that off to me off camera, but that's the main point for them, is that Wes Houlihan's so key to those home without him, they're going to struggle, I feel, tomorrow, and it could benefit us, to be honest. It's good news for us, especially as you at championship level. I know I say there's a lot about a lot of players, but championship, he is absolutely ideal. He knows that league like the back of his hand. He knows his way around it. He, he'd cause any team trouble in this league, so it's a bonus for us that he won't be lining up at Villa Park tomorrow. And what are you expecting from the Villa lineup, Dan? I think we'll see. I think we'll see changes. I mean, last time out against Wigan, although we'd been playing well and that patched up eleven did seem to, to work, there was three or four players playing at playing out of position. I think the big the big thing is, I think we've touched on it on previous videos, is whether Yedinak actually actually plays, having been on international duty and obviously doing a lot of air miles over the over the last week. I think he, my gut tells me that he will start and that he'll play at centre back. I think we'll see Johnson in goal, Hutton will keep his place right back this time though, and I think he'll obviously be thriving having seen that apology letter that I did for him. I think Neil Taylor will be looking to bounce back from the disappointment of international duty at left back. You'll have Chester and Yedinak centre backs, Adoma on the right, Amavi on the left, Hurahan, Lansbury, central mid, and I think Hogan and Kodra will lead the line now. Yeah, I've pretty much gone for the same side, but I've actually predicted the fact that Mili Yedinak perhaps won't play because of the air miles and Nathan Baker obviously coming back to full fitness, so I've put Nathan Baker back in that side straight away. And Yedinak sitting on the bench, obviously, after that long international break where we went to the UAE as well as playing against Iran as well. So he's had a lot of air miles for him. So we've got a new segment now where you can send in your questions and we'll answer them during the match preview. Dan, I believe you've got the first one there. I have indeed. It's come from Twitter and it's come from Sam Young. He says, do you see the game as merely a dead rubber fixture or does it still have an importance in terms of momentum for next season? Both teams haven't really got much to play for for being realistic in terms of Norwich and their promotion hopes and the way they're playing at the moment. And the same goes for Villa in terms of the position we are points-wise and the injuries we've got. Um, but Jack was kind enough to actually send us a video as well with his thoughts on the game. So why not see them now? First of all, a massive thank you for letting me on. Jack Reed from Talk Norwich City here. You might see the set in the background. I've just actually finished up filming my match preview that's gone on my channel. And to be honest, 
not really too much to talk about in terms of this game. I said at the start of the season, this was definitely one of the games I looked at and went, yeah, we need to win that if we want to get in the playoffs or automatic promotion. And it's been a very disappointing season for both of us, I think. I think you, you're going through more of a transitional period, certainly adapting to your new owner, um, getting your new players on board, chipping a lot out. We kind of went with the tried and trusted method that we well we thought was trusted of keep your core set of players and keep your manager and keep your owners and you'll go straight back up this time it's been very different um our core set of players are aging and not really got the talent they need to be uh, good championship players. I mean, this weekend's game, I'm looking forward to it nonetheless. It's always a good game between us two guys, but our away form uh, at Villa Park is just woeful. And to be honest, our away form this season is just woeful. Um, we've won very few games away from home. I think just five all season, uh, maybe even less than that off the top of my head. Um, so it's going to be tough for us. You guys are in good form. You've got some players really coming into fruition now, which is um, slightly worrying for us guys. At the same time, though, we score goals. Uh, I think we're the third highest goal scorers in this league. We've nearly scored 30 more goals than you guys, uh, but we also concede a lot of goals as well. So I think there's going to be goals in this game. I'm going for a score draw. I'm just going to say a 2-2. Actually, uh, a little 2-2. So a massive thanks to the middle of you guys for letting me on. I've been Jack Reed from Talk Nerve City. Links in the description if you want to head over and check out my channel. Had Matt from, uh, from, from you guys come over and have a chat about the game as well. Massive thanks. I'll see you on Saturday at Villa Park. Dan, the next question's come from Facebook from Josh PH, who said, will Alan Hutton score? Well, <laughs> he's come close recently. As I said in the, in the Hutton apology video, he's had me worried the last few weeks, but now, I've apologised to him. I can obviously get up and celebrate with the rest of the fans if he if he does score. And obviously, I hope hope he does score because he's a he's a Villa player. He's he's either going to score and I'm going to have to get his name on the back of my shirt next season, or he's going to have an absolute nightmare and score an own goal and make me look like an idiot. That that's that's the way I see it. It's one, there's going to be no middle ground with it. It's it's going to go one of two ways, in my opinion. What about you? Well, he's got every chance, the same as every player on that pitch has got. But to be fair, he has got himself in some promising positions recently, obviously playing at right wing as well. But I think he's got a good chance, the same as any other player really has, if we're being realistic. So the third question comes from Max, who says, would you start both Scott Hogan and Jonathan Codger, or would you bring Scott Hogan off the bench? Obviously, me and you, Dan, have both decided to go with that 4-4-2 option with Scott Hogan starting with Jonathan Codger. To me, it seems like Bruce has obviously, obviously touched on the fact he wants both of them to play together in the 4-4-2. So, for me, he needs the game time with those two together. Obviously, he hasn't had much time yet to bleed them both together. Well, he's had extra time on the training ground this week, so you'd expect he's fitter than he was a few weeks ago when he came up against Wigan. Whether you're in the Championship or you're in the Premier League or wherever, if you're spending big money on, on two players, you pretty much need to get them in the team. And as you say... Bruce has stated that he wants to play 4-4-2, so now is the time to get that, that get that partnership going. Now is the time to try it because effectively it doesn't look as if we've got much to play for. We've got we've got nothing to lose by trying them, and there are two proven goal scorers in the championship. So I don't see why now if you're going to play 4-4-2, there's no point keeping a doma up front because that isn't going to be what we do next season. Let's get him on the pitch and see what they can do together because I think when they played together previously. It was just an awful time for the team. The team was in complete disarray. We weren't really creating chances. We were terrible at the back. We weren't playing good football. Now all that's kind of changed. So it's a good time to try them out together, in my opinion. Okay, the final questions come from another Max on Instagram. I think I'm probably now the only person in the world that's not on Instagram. And he says, who do you think is our key player for the game? To me, it's Kodra. Um, he's getting ever closer to that record of 20 goals in a season something that hasn't been achieved since Peter With There's such a long record break there to be broken, and I think he can do it soon. I think he can do it this season. He's still got games to come, and I really do think he's on great form at the moment. He's got that blistering goal as well for the Ivory Coast against Russia, so he's in a good vein of form as well, and he's continued that into the international break, and he'll come back hopefully fairly fresh, obviously not featuring for the Ivory Coast versus Senegal the other day, so hopefully he can be fully fit. How about yourself? I'm going to go with, with Horahan. I think... He does a lot of stuff that goes unnoticed, and I think he, he actually is the one that's making us tick at the moment. He's got quite incisive passing, he gets around the pitch, and he actually gets himself in the box. And in a 4 4 2, with him and Lansbury playing alongside each other, I'd expect Lansbury to be the one that sits more than, more than Horahan. And this kind of links into our 
predictions quite nicely because I'm going to go with Horahan for the first goal. So yeah, for me, I think he's our key player. And um, what's your actual full prediction for the game then? I've gone with a uh, 2-0 to Villa, Horahan and Hogan to get on the score sheet. What about you? I've actually gone for a 1-1 one, one draw with Jonathan Codger scoring for us and uh, it's going to be a Cameron Jerome goal. I can sense it um, to make it 1-1 one, one, after what you've said especially. So we've tried something different with the match preview today, including the Q&As. If you'd like to see a separate video where we answer more questions, then make sure you let us know that below, commenting if you'd like to see more Q&As. And of course, if you have enjoyed this video, then please do smash that like button below, or politely like the button, it's up to you. And subscribe to The Villa View if you are new to the channel. That is not your phrase to use. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another one? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. And don't forget to subscribe. Click on our logo there on the left and press subscribe. Easy.